Thanks for coming. Uh, this is deep diving into gRPC security, a case study on API security, and we'll have some fun proto, proto buff reflection. I'm Dana White. I've been a software engineer for a long time. Um, I have a lot of animals. Uh, this is Austin, who's going to be speaking later. Um, he likes stocks, <clears throat> and he's been a software engineer for a while. So, what we do. At, Stock, at Stackhawk, we make a dynamic application security testing tool to ensure API security, and it helps engineers find, triage, and fix vulnerabilities before they see production. production. We basically enable engineers to shift security left, and we are part of the team, Austin and I particularly, are part of the team that make engineer the DAS scanning tool. We also really, really like gRPC. So I'm going to give a quick overview of what DAS is, Austin's going to dive into it a little deeper when it's his turn to talk, um, but kind of you need a basic understanding for what we're going to go into next. Um, like I said, dynamic application security testing, that's what DAS stands for. It tries to mimic a hacker trying to ha hack your site. So like live hacking, what they'd be able to, you know, access over HTTP. Um, and so part of that is, to explore that is you need to be able to get the full surface of your application to test. So some of the things you think about when someone's trying to attack your site, SQL injections, pretty much, you know, everybody knows that one. Um, so what we do is we do SQL injection, uh, but over HTTP. Um, if you're familiar with the XKCD comic, this is little Bobby tables, but over, over HTTP. So this is discovers how you don't sanitize your uh, database inputs. Um, so one of the things we need to do to um, discover the surface of your application is to, iter is to um, oh, I forgot what we're gonna be talking about. Sorry. Um, okay, so there's three parts we're gonna be talking about. A developer tool to discover and iterate on authentication, which I was kind of saying that you needed that to discover the surface of your application. Um, we're gonna talk about how at Stackhawk we run our internal microservices with gRPC, and then we're going to talk about discovering vulnerabilities in gRPC services. So the authentication cards. Authentication is always a problem. Authentication is always different, and it's actually designed to be unautomatable. Um, and there is always some legacy authentication where you need three cookies and a bearer token, and the guy who wrote it left 10 years ago. So to actually discover the authentication for your application, you need a quick way to test authentication. So this is what auth might look in our CI CD pipeline. That's just an example of our config file. And it's really simple. And that's pretty nice. But other times you might need web inputs. This is a little Selenium script designed to click buttons so that you can auth. Um, so that's kind of hard to work on that by starting the scanner or doing a PR to CICD to wait for the scan to run. So if we need to iterate real quickly, um, we decided to come up with a tool, um, which is, and we use gRPC for it because we love gRPC. So in this instance, it's a CLI command that spawns a local gRPC server. Think it's running on localhost at port 20,000, listening for any client to connect to it. In our instance, we're actually using our CLI to communicate with the gRPC server. Um, so, and it's watching all those config files that I just showed you for a change and then streaming anything back so that you have instant feedback and you get it immediately. So how it works, this is you at your computer. That's your application. It's pretty fancy graphics, I know. That's you authenticating and it doesn't work. Let's step back a little bit. We threw our gRPC server in there. And now it goes to our gRPC server and goes back to your application. And this time it works. I'm lying. It never actually works that fast. You're going over it a bunch of times. And that's why we have this tool running. So this is some code, uh, basically, of why we liked gRPC for this, is streaming back real-time changes. Um, kind of longing by line like this. It's Kotlin. We like Kotlin, too. Um, some coroutine magic, some coroutine magic, and a little keep running function. In this instance, it's iterating over a log file, but it can be anything, sending messages back to um, our gRPC server, 
And this is sending it back to the client, just doing the on next and pulling everything back. So you have real time feedback on what you're doing in your authentication. But we also use gRPC in our platform. We have a pretty typical setup, I guess if anything's typical, we have our Microsoft's microservices hosted in Kubernetes, and then we have a RESTful gateway API to talk to our front end over HTTP 1. But we have gRPC communication all in the back end. Um, for some of examples, um, we handle our protobufs by having it all in one repo, um, and we wrap all our request responses so that if like maybe this underlying config changes or we add something to it, we don't break the contract. But we're security, so we need to test our services. Um, so we could test our API gateway, um, and that requires every other service that it depends on up and running in Kubernetes, um, which we do that, but you're only testing the pathways in the microservices that it uses. And like I said, authentication is a problem. What we'd like to do is test our gRPC services directly. And yeah, authentication is still a problem, but traditionally we haven't had a scanner that goes over HTTP one. We need a scanner that goes over HTTP two. So I'm gonna turn it over to Austin and he's gonna talk about the wonderful world of DAST. Okay. Thank you, Dana. Uh, so I am going to talk a little bit more of the scanner and how we improved our scanner to be able to scan gRPC applications. But before I do that, I want to talk a little bit more about what DAST is and give a little bit more context of the uh, problem we had to approach. Uh, so as Dana said, DAST is a uh, dynamic application security testing tool that essentially looks at your live running application and tries to include malicious data in its requests, look at the responses, see what might have stuck, see what a hacker could actually get away with or, or a bad actor out there might actually be able to get away with. Um, and we're trying to do this all with the shift left perspective of doing this as part of the development pipeline. So none of these bugs ever get to production. It's a lot more expensive and time consuming and scary to have these types of vulnerabilities in production. So we want to fix it as part of the development cycle. Uh, something else that's worth noting is that there's particular code scanning tools out there, such as GitHub CodeQL, Sneak, and what they're doing is static code analysis, where they're going line by line and actually looking at your code to see if there's any outdated packages, known vulnerabilities that you have straight in your repo. What we do different at Stackhawk and with our DAS scanner tools, we're completely code agnostic of that. We don't ever want to look at your code. We don't want to see your repos. We just need your live running application and a way to talk to it. Once we can talk to it, we can start sending those malicious requests and seeing what sticks by the responses. And give you a, nice, a lot of nice triage notes, a lot of possible solutions, uh, et cetera, information on that. So the fact that we're code agnostic, that means we're totally able to scan anything under the sun. May, may it be web apps, spas, REST applications, SOAP applications, GraphQL. Uh, but the problem was up until now, none of these DAS scanners, including ourselves, could do these uh, gRPC applications due to the complex and efficient nature of how you communicate with them. Until now. Stackhawk now and Hawkscan can now scan gRPC applications. And that is mainly what I'm here to talk about is how we approached that problem and figured out how we could have our scanner communicate with these gRPC applications. So as I mentioned, the gRPC applications definitely deserve the same DAS love that all the other API types. They're susceptible to vulnerabilities just like REST and Open API or REST and GraphQL and SPAs. Uh, so some of the challenges we ran into, as Dana mentioned, the gRPC stuff all runs over HTTP2 protocol, uh, but our product is built on top of uh, Zap. It's an open source uh, scanner itself. And so Zap already had some support for HTTP2. So we were really easily able to leverage that and start sending these requests over HTTP2. Uh, as we also know about the uh, complexity, which also lends a lot to the efficiency of gRPC, gRPC uh, without access to the proto buffs, you really, it's hard to determine what the kind of schema of one of these applications looks like. Uh, an open API, we have like a Swagger doc or an open API, open API spec and GraphQL, we have schema files. We don't really have anything like that in, in a gRPC uh, if you don't have access to the actual proto buffs themselves. So what there is, though, is what's called the file descriptor set that you can generate in gRPC. And this can either be accessed via reflection, like you go to the application slash gRPC or whatever your reflection endpoint. Uh, some frameworks actually support generating this. For example, we use Kotlin, so we're able, as part of our build script, we can just generate these this file descriptor set. And this really encompasses all the objects that live within the, uh, within the application itself. 
but one thing about this is the file descriptor set there's still really just a byte file so as a human i can't open that and determine what the schema of the application looks like but it is still a starting point that we can start determining things about the application so it's not impossible and leveraging the grpc libraries that are provided to us is particularly like i mentioned we're using the kotlin ones we can start going through and programmatically looking at these file descriptor sets and seeing what the application has what types of messages what types of services what types of methods etc so really the key to all this in terms of the scanner and actually being able to communicate with these applications is the dynamic message class that grpc provides for us so the dynamic message class allows us to start building these messages at runtime uh, and give them the certain information and method signatures that they're going to need to be able to properly communicate given an application. So really all we need to do is by parsing through this file descriptor set and getting certain types of messages, uh, whatever it may be, in this case, say an all string message that just has a few strings of this field, uh, we can start iterating through that, setting the values to what we want, and then when we instantiate this dynamic message object, we give it the original type that we pull from the file descriptor. And by the time it creates this message and sends it over the wire to the actual application, it's going to look and feel exactly like that original message type. It'll no longer be this dynamic object into the context of the application once it receives it. Uh, so like I said, the, the, byte, the byte code is really essentially the same as if we really created one of these things. So just a little bit of the example code here that we use in Kotlin. This is one that can just uh, take, we, First thing we do is we create the dynamic message with the builder of the message type that we're processing currently. And then we can just from that point iterate through each of the fields and start setting values. Obviously is a very simple, uh, simple example. If this is a complex object with nested fields, nested things like that, uh, you need to be a little smarter about it. And you know, that's where we, that's what we did. So by using recursion and some old school programming magic, we all learned back in school. Uh, we're able to iterate through and recursively go through all these different dynamic messages that are provided by that original file descriptor set. And through that, we start generating messages with values uh, either through uh, custom variable injection or leveraging the Faker library to come up with realistic type uh, data uh, based on email fields or phone number fields. We can come up with uh, realistic data around that kind of stuff. Uh, but something I do want to touch on that's very important that we've uh, implemented is custom variable injection when it comes to scanning. So what this means is that as the scanner is running and you have certain fields or, val or uh, certain fields in your messages or endpoints, things like that, and you can start designated certain values to those specific fields. So for example, if you have test users in your CI CD pipeline and you do it in pre-prod and you have test users there in certain conditions, you can start saying when the scanner runs and this user ID comes up, use this specific user ID for scanning because they might exercise different branches. So really what that does is allows you to really make sure you exercise all the different logic branches of your code and let the scanner explore every nook and cranny possible. But if you don't have any of those custom variables, we do use Faker to come up with very smart properly formatted values. Uh, so once we do that and we have these messages constructed and we can start sending to the gRPC application, we're just off to the races at that point. All the serialization is happening behind the scenes. So when it's actually communicating to and from the gRPC application, it's in the correct bytecode. And then when we present the findings on our side, we'll serialize that back into human readable kind of JSON stuff. So it's easy to interpret the data without having to go through all the bytecode and, and the under under the hood stuff of gRPC. So what I can show off here is uh, this is our Stackhawk platform that unauthed me well in the past five minutes. Get back to that. There we go. So this is an example of uh, one of our scans that we ran against our vulnerable gRPC application. Uh, let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, so what we have here in some of our findings, so the services, as we know, we have services and gRPC services, and those services come with uh, methods as well. So we get a nice listing. And again, this is all pulled from the file descriptor set that we got off the reflection endpoint for this particular service. So with that file descriptor set, we're able to find all the different services, all the different methods, and map them out pretty easy to read. Uh, in our findings, we can say, Dana mentioned a SQL injection earlier, we purposely put a little SQL injection bug in our vulnerable application. So when we drill into that, we get to go down here and see all the different services and methods that that SQL injection was present on. And you can see down here in the uh, evidence, our description put a little comma there as one of the values, and we ended up throwing a Postgres SQL exception. So in the response, 
uh, we get to see right there in the gRPC formatted response that a Postgres SQL exception was thrown, which we shouldn't know you have Postgres SQL just by sending a request to your application. So that's how we know you are susceptible to a SQL injection attack here. And then just like everything else, we'll give you nice information on it, uh, steps for remediation, some cheat sheets on different frameworks. And, uh, and yeah, the big thing here is when it comes back, we get to see it in the nice formatted JSON format rather than the bytecode that was actually sent to the application. So it becomes very human friendly in this sense. Um, I, think, I think that might be about it. Yeah, I think that's it, guys. Uh, if anybody has any questions, we're happy to take some questions. Back here. So this can... Does it scan any vulnerability other than SQL injection? Oh, does it? Here, I can actually show you while I still have this up. Uh, if we go back over to the scan, we can see the plugin summary. And essentially what this plugin summary is a list of all the different vulnerabilities that it checked for. So obviously all the OWASP top tens, all the big ones, uh, heart bleed, SQL injections, the list goes on and on. And since we're developed on top of the open source project Zap, as they add more plugins, there are more vulnerabilities. We're also bringing those into our system as well. So our library of vulnerability scanning is always growing. Sure. Any other questions? You mentioned OWASP at the beginning. Do you support, and you mentioned custom variables. Do you support um, adding custom headers and metadata that may include OWASP as well? Yeah, um, there's a few different ways that we can do that. But yeah, we support that whether it's configured or whether you like we have an auth scripting thing where you can just basically make whatever you want happen happen. But we do have some ways you can plug it in. But yeah. And as far as the custom variable injection goes, that's also available on headers, uh, path parameters, body parameters. Uh, it's really anywhere where we can identify the field name and inject those certain values for you. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so in terms of these scans, are, are you guys using an agent on the on the box or it's going to be a live scan while the, while the services are running? Yep, that's the whole thing is since we're dynamic testing, we need the service to be up and running so we could actually contact it. Uh, and we don't care about the code, what framework it's written in, what API type it is. But yes, to actually scan it, it needs to be up and running and we got to be able to access it. We suggest okay. you don't do this in production. <laughs> Understood. And uh, what kind of, you know, what are the resources, for example, when the scan is running in terms of resources, how, ev how heavy is the scan? Uh, a lot of that depends on how big your application is itself. Uh, if you have a pretty efficient, small weight application, a lot of times our scans are a minute long, maybe not even that long. Uh, but some of our larger legacy and people that are scanning entire gateways rather than individual microservice, a lot of times we can see slightly longer scan times. Uh, but as far as resource goes, it's uh, it's very configurable and uh, you can pass arguments to say how much memory you want the scanner to use, uh, et cetera. So you can control that. Okay, thanks. Sure. All right, one more. Sorry, sure. I, I was unfamiliar with Stackhawk and uh, Zap before today. Mm -hmm. uh, I was unfamiliar with Stackhawk and Zap uh, before today. So the rude question is, why would I use you rather than Zap? And the second question is, can I use you for free to get started? Well, the first, to answer the first question, why would you use us rather than Zap? If you have ever used Zap before, I think that would answer your question a lot. <laughs> it is, it's hard. it is made, what is it, a Java swing front end made back, uh, started 15 or so years ago. The it's UI very cumbersome, <laughs> very hard to configure. So what Stackhawk does is we build on top of it, make the scanner itself better and make it just so much easier to use and a very intuitive platform to go along with it to triage findings and, okay. and learn about these things. And I don't think, I don't believe it supports gRPC natively. Is that, no, I will maybe if you do some crazy, yeah. jump through some crazy hoops. But uh, the second question is, uh, or second answer is yes, we do have a free trial account where you can scan a single application as much as you want for free. Uh, we don't charge by scan time. Uh, so you can take a single application, go to the races on it, pull out full support from Stackhawk and go to town. And two weeks. That's our VP of product, Lauren. Say hi. Thanks for coming, Lauren. <laughs>
question. Does it matter where the application is deployed that you're scanning, like cloud or on-prem? Nope, as long as we can talk to it. Yeah. We, we like to run the scanner as close to the application as possible just for latency reasons. Uh, but yeah, as long as we can contact the, the application in one form or another. Yeah. So say it's like an internal on thing. Is the scanner something that you can deploy locally? Or just sure. Yeah, we have a CLI that you can run. We can. Uh, we're also Dockerized, so it's easy to stick in any pipeline pipelines yeah. or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, typically as developers and us working on it, we're using the CLI quite frequently. Uh, but yeah, totally totally easy to do that. Cool. All right, guys. Well. We appreciate the time. Thanks for coming over to the little room to check us out. Thanks, everyone.